I think it's quite simple, really. Manchester United, it's like staring everybody in the face. And I know he didn't play today, and he should have come at half time, and he didn't. But Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the biggest problems at Manchester United. Mm. You can't have a player. Last season, they had three players bigger than uh, Ralph Ranick, didn't they? They had uh, Fernandez, Pogba, and Ronaldo. Now they've still got Ronaldo, who's bigger than Eric Ten Hag. A player that doesn't want to be there, has no interest in being at Manchester United at all. He scoots off at half-time when he plays uh, in a midweek game. And then he still comes back, and he's still indulged, and he's still put on the bench. So Eric Ten Hag has got to grow a pair and actually say, right, you're not going to be involved in uh, the first team at all until the end, at least until the end of the transfer, and make it clear. Because he hasn't actually said, oh, we want... Why would you want to keep... Ronaldo, when it's so... What did Alex Ferguson used to do with players? If anyone gets bigger than the club, they have to go out of the door. David Beckham, Roy Keane, Yap Stam, where he thought he was the sort of only mistake that he made. But you go out. And then, and then what happens to the other players is they actually think if he can do that to him, what can, what he, can do he do to, to like Aubameyang with Arteta? Exactly the same. Uh, let's get to Leanne Sanderson, who is a big Manchester United fan, former Le- uh, Lioness <laughs> as well. And she's been joining us over the course of the summer to great uh, success. Hello. Hi, Sam. I was hoping that you forgot that I was here. Um, <laughs> All right, Leanne. Hi, Sam. You in a bunker? Can you get a reception? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of that game? I mean, you're a big fan of Ronaldo, but is Perry right? Is he the problem? Is his shadow casting too high a uh, darker cloud over the course of the club at, the, at this moment in time? No, absolutely not. I mean, was he the reason why Fred kept knocking it off the pitch in the first half? So I just think, you know, obviously everyone's entitled to their opinions. But for me, I mean, I want to start by giving Brighton a lot of credit. To be honest, I thought Danny Welbeck was absolutely brilliant. He was coming like modern day batter shooter and Inzaghi. We were making him look even better, but you've got to give credit where it's due. One ball in between Martinez and Maguire cut us open. I thought Brighton should have had a penalty. But I mean, Graham Potter, what a sensational job he's done at Brighton. Because I think sometimes when these teams beat the so called better teams, and I'm a Manchester United fan, but I will give credit where it's due. But I mean, I just think the fact that we started this game with Fred and McTominay in the midfield already, for me, was already a loss because I was hoping that some things would change. Now, that Ten was the Hart first thing changed. we mentioned when the team came out. The fact also, is, is there's no revolution here. It's still Fred and McTominay in midfield. Also, as well, Leanne, they, Ten Hag wants his team to close down, right? That didn't happen in the first half because they were so elongated. When Brighton scored their second goal, you know, it was down in their left-back position, there's probably 60, 70 yards between the front and the centre-halves. And on the Cristiano Ronaldo thing, there's not one team in the world that's successful, apart from, obviously, maybe Lionel Messi, other than that, especially in the Premier League, where they're successful when a player is bigger than the manager. It doesn't happen at Man City. The biggest one at Man City is Guardiola. The biggest one at Liverpool is Klopp. This problem, today wasn't Ronaldo's problem, but the whole culture around it, because he's being indulged. If the was... culture of what, though, Perry? Because I don't disagree. I don't think... What, I think if Ronaldo uh, culture of complacency, culture of inadequacy, yeah, culture how can, how can of not being bothered. How can you say Ronaldo's complacent, though? How can you say he's complacent? I don't agree with keeping a player that doesn't want to be well, at the club. Well, there you go. You've just answered it. It's exactly but, it. No, but you can't blame it all on Ronaldo. I mean, today was pretty bad. No, I said and it's one, of the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems is Ronaldo, because he is the story all the time. So he's, if Ronaldo he's then about goes... Yep. Okay, if Ronaldo then goes, then what? You have to go and get another centre-forward. Ronaldo's, so you're you're putting all of your eggs on Ronaldo. You think that no, he'll stay I'm in. not. But he's better than the players we have. I mean, Sancho today, non-existent. Rashford, non-existent. But Bruno the culture Fernandes, stinks. Non-existent. But, the, the sorry, culture, the culture at Manchester United stinks. It still I'm stinks. I'm not denying that, but that's not only down to Ronaldo. Well, he's one of the problems. Well, you've got a player that plays a, a game in a friendly and then does one at half time. So that's a lot of other players. So he's yeah. not the only problem, Perry. He's not the only problem. No, but he's Along the biggest because he's the biggest name. If Ten Hag wants to go in there and set his stall out, right, and say this is my philosophy, and he's indulging Cristiano Ronaldo, that doesn't set a great example. Do you think that the board has something to answer to here, Leanne? Bearing in mind that, that there's been no sign of them getting the deals that Eric Ten Hag wanted. The central core of which was he wanted Frankie De Jong. He only wanted Frankie De Jong, and he was the central plank of his rebuilding mission. They haven't got him. So, bearing in mind that he hasn't got the big trinket that he wanted over the summer, it was never really going to to get off the launch pad. Yeah, I've said this to you many times as well, Sam, before I think we seem to take an eternity to get players over the line. It took ages for Ericsson to come. I mean, Manchester City, they wanted Haaland, they went and got him. They wanted Calvin Phillips, they went and got him. So they seem to be able to get players through the door, whereas Manchester United can't seem to do it. Now, I don't blame Frankie De Jong for not wanting to come. 
obviously there's a lot of money and situations at Barcelona. But why would, if he was watching that today, what would make any player want to come and play for Manchester United? I mean, it's going to take a while for Ten Hag to change a culture. And I don't disagree with everything that Perry's saying, but I do think, you know, there's a lot more problems than Manchester, than Ronaldo at the club. Do you think and if that... he does leave, then, I mean, we've lost Cavani. And I know he didn't really play last year, but there's a reason why he didn't really want to play. Yeah. Do, do you think that Eric Ten Hag needs to, this is one text that's text us in actually, and he, he, I think it's quite an interesting point. He needs to wake up Eric Ten Hag. He doesn't understand that the Premier League is harsher and faster than any other league in the world and he isn't prepared for it. Is that a problem? Was that a problem today? Was he not absolutely sure of exactly what the differences are between the Erie Divisi and the Premier League. You can watch it as much as you like on TV, but actually when you get down to it, when you walk into it, when you play and feel it close up, it's a very different game. Yeah, but I don't think that's why we lost this game today. I think obviously when you look at our bench, Van der Beek was on the bench, Elanga, you know, I kind of like the idea that Varane didn't play. I think he's been really poor for Manchester United at times, but I don't think that's got anything to do with the leagues being different. I just think that, you know, McTominay probably should have been sent off in the first half, it was quite fortunate. And I think for Man United fans, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but I think as soon as we see Fred and McTominay on the starting eleven, I think it makes everybody kind of, you know, you, you, a bit underwhelmed, a little bit negative before the game's even started. And you think, OK, here we go. But some of the players just weren't good enough. You know and it looks like they, they haven't really changed from last season. They had a good pre-season. At the end of the day, beating Liverpool 4-0 for me, I'm glad we did it, but it's still only pre-season. It has no, you know, evidence on the league. But I don't think that's got anything to do with it, the fact that what's Ten Hag supposed to do? He picked the best team that he thought was the best team and certain players can't pass from, you know, when you can't pass the ball from me to you, Sam. How are you supposed to do anything with that? But I have no doubt that Ten Hag will sort this out and hopefully, you know, we can get players through the door. But we can't keep buying players and the players that seem to come in, they seem to underperform as well. Look at Sancho. I mean, he's had about three or four good games for Man United since he's come in, but today he's still nothing. Leanne, you, you mentioned there about Eric Ten Hag. You know, you've been in um, like teams and squads where a new manager's coming in and you look at the manager, you look at, you know, the training and the culture and as you got ideas, the biggest impact you can make is, I said about dealing with Ronaldo, which he hasn't done yet, but at half time, when you're in trouble, as players, you're going in, if your characters, you try and sort out yourself, but you look at the manager and you think, right, have you got answers here? Are you going to sort this out? Eric Ten Hag doesn't make a substitution. He's got five subs. And it was abysmal in the first half, and yet he doesn't make a I substitution. I don't understand why he doesn't do that. You know, I don't understand and he did why it he doesn't in the make a minute. statement. Three, and then three subs at 89 minutes. What are they going to do then? There's no chance of you making an impact that late in the game. You've got to be decisive in this league, because otherwise it gets away from you. Haven't you, Leanne? Yeah, I think so. And I think sometimes you've got to be a bit more cutthroat, like a bit like Mourinho, where he makes subs in the first half. Now, I'm not forgetting players dragged after 30 minutes, but if it's not working, a great you have to point. tactically change something. You've got to do something to make it happen. I mean, I think everyone can have their opinions on what to do. But ultimately, this is why these managers are in the best managerial roles in the world. You know, and we can give our opinions. But I have no doubt that Ten Hag can change, turn it around. But it's going to take a while. I mean, Brighton are a really good team. I think we have to give them credit. At yeah, times, they were popping absolutely. the ball around today unbelievably well. And I don't think we underestimated them. But I think our midfield, you know, couldn't get near. McAllister, Gross, you know, Lalana was brilliant. Re genuinely, Trossard. So you've got to give... And Dunk and Veltman. I mean, if only Manchester United defended in the way that Lewis Dunk did in the last dying seconds of the game when he threw himself in front of the ball. And you've got to look at De Gea on the goal as well. You know, Fred was flat on his feet. Whereas when the ball was down the other end, you know, Veltman reacted really quickly when Sanchez parried it, whereas we just don't seem to have that hunger. I think Man United fans, we don't like losing, no fans do, but I think it's how you lose. And when you see players like Bruno today, I've been his biggest fan since he came in, but I think he's been so poor. He really has, and he should have scored. In the first five minutes, yes, when the ball came to on the edge of the box, he hit it about 20 yards over. That's not good enough. At this level, you have to take your chances. And, you know, it come back to bite us in the end, but like I said, you've got to give credit to Brighton genuinely, because I think they were brilliant.